Hi there viewers, uh, today in this video we're going to be taking a look at how I make and edit my videos. So I've had a couple of comments on a few videos asking how I create my overlay and, and just generally how I actually create my videos. So um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of take everybody through the process. So for anybody that's new to the channel, uh, what you see here is an example of a kind of the finished result. Um, and now I'm going to go step by step to show you how that all gets put together. So I'm going to include some timestamps. So if you only want to jump to a bit that you're interested in, uh, you can do that. Otherwise, let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to look at is how I actually record my external input. So when I'm racing, um, how am I actually recording this stuff? And so you can see that I use VR. So um, basically, I actually record the uh, kind of output of uh, the external stuff and then I edit in a replay of the internal camera later on um, and I've basically got OBS with a couple of uh, webcams I'm capturing the VR headset feed just to allow me to sync it up later and I've got some things on the wheel here that actually allow me to control OBS uh, directly from the wheel so I don't need to click a mouse uh, you can see here I'm turning the switch that's hiding the preview and I've got another switch that actually stops and starts the recording. So as I touched upon a second ago, um, because I use VR and I want to actually have a fixed view, I uh, save any replays of any good races and then um, I'm actually recording the footage for the external camera and the cockpit view from the replay rather than the actual live race. So I'm now going to just go through some of the software I use when uh, doing recordings. I use some of this stuff actually when I'm actually racing as well. And the first one you can see here is Crew Chief. So this just basically gives a Crew Chief uh, while you're racing. Uh, the other one that I've covered previously is Trading Paints that allows you to see the custom paint jobs, uh, both from replays and the race. And then uh, the ones that I only use in the actual recordings are sim racing apps and Joel Real Timing. Um, both of these two actually allow me to get uh, overlay data for the um, OBS recording uh, and actually display things like the throttle input, uh, the track map, um, obviously position, lap times, etc. So for anybody unaware, uh, Joel Real Timing uh, is basically a piece of software that allows you to use overlays, um, it has dashboards, as you can see here, um, and live timing and many other things. And now what I've actually done in mine, which I'll come to in a bit later, is I've actually edited that and used it on mine. Um, similar sim racing apps you can see here. There's a whole quick start guide of how you use this. Um, but essentially it gives you track maps, overlays, live timing, leaderboards, etc. And so I've used bits and pieces of this um, and edited it slightly uh, to actually build up my overlay that you see in all my recordings. And I use the two combined because um, I find some bits work better uh, in one than the other. So I could probably do a whole video on this on its own, uh, but you can see here all the software that I've just mentioned and I'm running OBS and essentially what you can see is uh, this is what we're capturing from the game from the replay and this is what we've got in OBS so obviously we don't have the external or the uh, uh, kind of TV cam bits all we have is the cockpit replay and all the overlays running you can see that I've got multiple uh, steering wheels and pedals and that's just so I can sync up all the different videos together um, I'm just going down some of the sources here as you can see I've got a lot on this overlay it's completely customized by myself um, and yeah as I say I could probably do a whole video breaking down each individual bit of this um, but you can see things like uh, the position, the laps, the leaderboard, uh, relatives, gears, um, all sorts and you see there as I'm turning it on and off it's disappearing off the, the actual thing um, so if people would want, want me to go much more in depth than this I can uh, but the general gist, if you read the quick start guides on sim racing apps or Joel Real Timing, is uh, you run the server and then that gives you uh, essentially a web 
uh, URL that you can then use. So you could view it in a browser, but you can add a browser source in OBS, and then you can use that browser source to display a piece of uh, a dashboard or whatever. Um, and so what I've actually done on mine is, uh, you can see here that it's got the full dashboard, but I've actually cropped that down to what I want, and I've added a transparent layer. So uh, one of those relatives, for example, on a driver might be just a bit of that whole dashboard that I'm displaying. Same with the best lap times. Um, the track map isn't working on this one because uh, I think the Charlotte Rovers only just changed. Uh, so we don't actually have a track map. Uh, but you can see here, there's a whole range of information that I've cropped and put in different places. Um, and same again with who the current driver is. So I've picked and choose bits and pieces to actually build this up. Um, the leaderboard, as you can see there, I've cropped it down, made it transparent again. Um, and then we've basically got the leaderboard. So once I've captured the cockpit view, I want to capture what we'd see in the TV cam. Um, so by default, the uh, view is quite wide. And since it's only a small TV cam, I want it a lot more zoomed in. So using control F12 brings up this camera control. And then I basically go around the lap editing each camera so that it's about 80% uh, zoom or 80 zoom, um, which essentially means that you've got a much tighter shot it shows the action a lot more closer and obviously since the TV camera is only going to be a small part of it uh, it shows it a lot better. So just like what we were doing with the cockpit cam I've got a TV cam overlay uh, it's basically the bit that you'll see in the corner and I've got a bit more info at the bottom uh, such as gear, steering etc just so that I can actually sync it up. So obviously to get that to work I've got to have sim racing apps etc still running um, and then I've obviously added that overlay on here um, just so that it makes it a lot easier when I edit all these bits together to actually make sure everything is in sync. Um, unfortunately, this does mean I have to record the race three times. So now that we've got three uh, different bits of footage recorded, the next thing is to edit it all together. So I've got a really basic template project that has my intro on it. Um, it also has the outro in here. Um, and yeah, really, we just need to import all the different content. Um, so I saved the template uh, to whatever my new video is going to be called, uh, and then just start importing the bits of video that I actually want to uh, kind of show together. Um, the one thing that I have found is to make this more performant, um, I generally uh, move this video onto my SSD so that when it comes to editing it, um, it loads a lot faster and actually uh, comes out a lot better. Uh, so as you can see here, this is just the external TV cam. We've got the external pedals uh, and then there's the cockpit view. So now we just need to sync it all up and actually make it work. So the first thing we're going to add is just the cockpit view. Um, that basically will put the entire race on there um, and you can see the bits that we'll end up syncing up the other items with. So to make it way, way easier to sync up, I always turn the wheel to the left and give a bit of throttle. Uh, and that will obviously be obvious on all the different feeds uh, and allow me to then easily sync them all up. So now we want to get the TV cam view. Uh, so I'm searching in here for kind of roughly when we apply the throttle and turn the wheel as well. You can see it's there. So we know that that is uh, pretty close to where we've got the cockpit view. So we're going to place it on there. Uh, initially it will be scaled at 100% so we'll want to shrink that down just remove the audio from that because we don't really want it um, so if I go to the effects panel um, not that effects panel the other one uh, I can scale this down to uh, a bit smaller so I can see both the um, kind of overlay uh, kind of throttle input of the cockpit view and also on the TV cam and so I want these two to match to make sure my external camera is synced with my internal. And you can see there it's slightly out. So the cockpit view is coming on and then it's coming on the TV camera. So I need to edit that down so the two match exactly the same. Okay, so I've now got it pretty much in sync. You can see the throttle both in the TV camera and the wheel inputs uh, also both match. And so we know now that um, this will actually be in sync so I'm going to reduce it down to 26 which makes it the correct size I'm going to position it over here 
over the TV cam overlay. So you now can't see the debug information I had and you also can't see um, the bit at the bottom of the TV cam. So just get it in the right position and then we should be good. So that should now mean that when we actually watch the footage, uh, both the external camera and the cockpit are in sync. So we're going to do the same now with the uh, the input cameras, so uh, both the steering wheel and the feet. Um, now I've kind of put it on here and I'm going to use the crop uh, to actually crop out most of the stuff that I don't want to see. Um, so we're going to still need to sync this up just like we did with the uh, TV camera. Uh, but for now we're just going to make it so that uh, we get rid of this black stuff. Um, and you can kind of see it's kind of coming together. So um, the next bit will be uh, making sure this matches kind of the rest of the uh, video uh, that we see. So at the moment you can see there it's completely out of sync. Um, the cockpit view turned the wheel and then we turn the wheel in the, in the webcam view uh, completely out. So to do this once again, I'm kind of looking at a bit of the sound. Uh, so the sound's telling me when the throttle was applied and I'm going to try to move it so that it's a bit closer. So you can see it's still slightly out, it's just not quite there. Um, so I'll just edit it down again and just give this a go. There we go. So you can now see that it's pretty much there. So the throttle uh, green bar that's on the cockpit goes up when my foot goes on the throttle and the steering wheel turns at the same time as the cockpit view wheel. So now that we've got the webcam view in sync, I'm going to duplicate that layer again um, because we actually want to crop the uh, steering wheel bit and the pedals separately. Um, so we've already got the steering wheel. Uh, now let's just crop out this black bit of the pedals. Um, and I'll need to crop that again on the other layer as well. Uh, so it's tighter on the steering wheel. But I'll just do the pedals first. Um, and then if I go back to the other layer, and I'll just crop this out completely. There you go. Uh, so now we've got the steering wheel, the pedals, and in theory, everything should be in sync. So if we actually press play, we've got the steering wheel turning, um, the pedal should move and actually if we were moving anywhere so let's just move this along um, we'll also have the exterior camera all in sync so the video at this point is quite close to the finished result um, but we do need to just edit a couple of bits so I generally record any bits of audio that are missing and edit the final bits together uh, including the intro and the outro um, and change the sound. So we should have the thing completely finished now. It's just a case of exporting it. Um, I don't really know uh, what settings I should be using. Um, so I've just created a YouTube profile that you can see the settings on here. Um, this might be a bit too large maybe because um, it generally ends up about six gigabytes by the end of the video. Um, but yeah, if you're interested, you should be able to see the settings that I've got. Um, and I make sure that the uh, maximize quality is on and also two pass rendering. And I just export it. So while that's exporting, that's sometimes a good time to go and look at creating a thumbnail. Uh, typically, I go back to the replay, I go and open the camera editor, and I just try to find something that's interesting. Uh, so using the camera editor, I'm sort of rotating a shot, I'm going back and forward in time. And uh, this bit here, the car's in the air, one's going backwards, another car's hit me. Um, overall, it just looks like quite an interesting shot. So this is uh, the shot that I kind of want for my, um, my thumbnail. So just trying to get the shot correct, then I'll hide the overlay by pressing space and then just print screen it essentially to save that shot. So I have a template for creating my um, thumbnails uh, in Photoshop and essentially you can see I've got these different layers already set. So this was the uh, template that I used on my BMW series. 
and essentially I just get the image that I've just uh, taken from iRacing. I usually select the whole thing, come in here, paste it in, then I resize it a bit so that it actually fits the thumbnail uh, ratio. Uh, so just do a transform to uh, make sure that it's it's kind of showing. I usually hide the iRacing.com bit at the bottom because that doesn't look that great on a thumbnail. Uh, so yeah that's kind of about right um, and then uh, the next thing really is just adding uh, the bit where I grey out the top bar so that um, the text can sit on that a bit better so I just put that in there move this up and then I uh, essentially copy the text in so I use the same text that I had before just copy it as a new layer and then I just go to edit that. So just simply select the text, uh, give it a new name and resize it so that it fits in the view. Uh, for the text, I'm just using a custom font and um, I've just got a gradient overlay on the text and then I've got an outer stroke uh, for the border of the text as well. Um, so pretty simple stuff really nothing too complicated put it kind of where I want it and then I'll do similar with the smaller text so I'll just put that somewhere and then I'll just edit that to say what I wanted to say so uh, the last thing I really do after this is just maybe a couple of small image touch-ups um, but really what's left is to upload the exported file um, add the thumbnail, add a description, and I think we're done. So I hope this was interesting for anybody. Uh, if you want me to go more in depth in certain bits, I'm totally happy to do that. Um, also, I could probably do another video about actually customizing the overlays, customizing sim racing apps, or JRT as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully, this has been interesting, um, gives you an idea of kind of the effort that goes in. Um, I think one of the problems at the moment is because I actually race in VR um, I have to record the race several times just to get the cockpit view and the external view and then obviously editing it together it can be quite laborious um, so maybe one day VR will get to the point where um, you can actually just record directly from the VR and it actually be good or uh, iRacing might allow us to use our account to spectate um, on another computer or something like that to record at the same time we race but right now I have to go through that anyway thanks for watching uh, please like the video and if you haven't uh, please subscribe for more videos thanks everybody and I'll catch you next time <laughs>